Hello, and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays, a weekly series all about pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, multi-level marketing, and other forms of business fraud. My name is Blair or the Illuminati, and today we're going to be speaking about an MLM called Plexus. Now, a few of you have been requesting that I cover this one, and honestly, I haven't really heard much about them. So I had to do a lot of learning to really get my hands dirty and figure out what exactly was going on here. But anyway, I do have to make a quick clarification that this is not the Plexus Consulting Group LLC in Washington, DC. Because when you look for Plexus on Wikipedia, the first thing you come to is this company. That's not them. As far as I can tell, Plexus the MLM doesn't really have its own Wikipedia page. So we're just gonna be diving in without any kind of guide. So this is gonna be an interesting one. So let's get right into it. According to one website called MLM News Report, Plexus was founded in 2006 by two MLM veterans, Tarl Robinson and Alfred Pedersen. They originally started with a DIY breast cancer check kit and breast skin cream. Following the recession of 2008, the two decided to head in a new direction, as Patterson explained, when it was a choice between dinner on the table or a cream for breasts, the breast cream quickly went out the window. Shortly thereafter, the company rebranded itself with weight loss formulas and dietary supplements. The Slim and Accelerator are Plexus's signature products. They come in powder form and when mixed with water, make their irresistible pink drink. Plexus has continued in this direction since, exploding in growth over the last five years. And this already sounds super odd to me. If Tarl and Alfred wanted to help families after a recession, why would they go into supplements? The supplement industry is already pretty shady, unregulated, and oversaturated, and it also doesn't exactly put food on the table. I mean, if anything, it does the opposite. They're selling dietary supplements and weight loss formulas. Personally, I haven't heard of many companies who sell breast cancer check kits either, so even I don't really know what's going on here fully. But I will say this, I obviously do not respect the business model they've chosen, the MLM format, but the self-examination kit at least seems to be more helpful than just another product in the oversaturated supplement industry, at first glance anyway. We will get into Plexus's products in a little bit later, but for now, I wanted to see what Tarl and Alfred's qualifications were, if any. There's one Medium article about Tarl that I found pretty telling. According to this, Tarl was raised by two parents who worked as full-time distributors for a network marketing firm, so his quote, love for the direct sales industry began at an early age, end quote. Now, this is my own theory, but I feel that perhaps Tarl's parents must have been pretty high up on that pyramid in order for Tarl to love MLMs the way he did. If his parents were in that 99% of distributors that lose money, struggle to get by, Tarl perhaps would have seen a different side of MLMs growing up and a far more common side at that. Anyway, regardless of how successful his parents may or may not have been, Tarl moved to Arizona to build his business. As for Alfred Pedersen, there's actually a lot more information on him, though its credibility is a bit more questionable. One online blog says that Alfred has admitted Plexus Worldwide was a tax fraud, and some people have accused him of being a thief and even a pervert. According to this blog, Alfred Pedersen was born July, 1938, Alfred John Pedersen. He is a Canadian from Brentwood Bay, Victoria, whom ended up becoming known as the president of Plexus Worldwide. In February, 1962 at Beaver Lake Park, Victoria, British Columbia, an enchanted fairy tale park called Wooded Wonderland was opened. In 1964, just south of the border in Tacoma, Washington, Alfred sought to replicate his Canadian theme park. With the help of seven investors, including John Hewitt Jr. and Chancery Griggs, Never Never Land came to life. Out of these fairy tales and theme parks, it is thought that business associations were created. In 1996, Alfred was faced with a $2,400 small claims case in Canada. He was named one of three claimants, including John Buswood and Anthony Newmayer against defendant Cameron Howard, for those unaware and needing to play catch up. James Gobble was Plexus Wireless, which then became Plexus Worldwide. 1992 to 2007, Enric was where Alfred hung his hat for many years as a distributor. His own LinkedIn states this. One can assume that this is where Patterson met Buswood. We have come to learn Numair was an Enrich distributor as well. His business of vitamin and food supplements called Numair Enterprises was located in North Vancouver, British Columbia. In 2003, Y2 Agency and Y2 Marketing were formed with Patrick Hunt. The blog continues to state that after Alfred had some civil court cases in Canada with a bank, Plexus Wireless came into being in 2005. 
Then in 2006, they became Plexus Pink until eventually in 2007, they became Plexus Worldwide, which is as we know them today. It's fine if someone or their business takes a little while to find their passion or learn what they're good at. People grow and change over time and so do businesses. But Plex seemed to simply shift gears towards what they thought would just make them the most money. Now, that's of course just my opinion. Overall, Alfred has a pretty unusual history, but this blog called The Pink Drink Scam is the only source I've been able to find that definitively names Alfred as the cause of sexual abuse within the Plexus workplace. If I try to find evidence of that sexual abuse at Plexus, I only see the grouping up of like a Christmas law party back in 2019 and Plexus Law is well, a defendant firm, a group of commercial lawyers in the UK. And there doesn't seem to be a connection between them and Plexus Worldwide, the MLM, as far as I can tell. However, this doesn't mean that there isn't sexual harassment. It just means that it's not easy to find and I am not able to confirm it. More on that later though. There's also a video on their website that allegedly is a recording of Alfred. In it, he states, We have three prices, right? We have a, a retail price, we have a preferred customer price, and we have the wholesale price or the ambassador price. Each one of them has a different PV point value. Now, if uh, we wanted to, to get windfall profits, we'd only have one. We would have the lowest. Yeah. So if a retail customer came on, wow, we're making lots of extra money because it's not going to the ambassadors. They're only getting paid off the actual PV. So there are a number of ways a company can, quote, cheat. And we just don't want to have any part of that. And I don't know, it, it just seems overall, it's pretty typical of how an MLM functions. So I can't say I'm surprised to necessarily hear that there's three different prices and things like that. The admission of saying that a customer that buys the product at its full retail value is just getting ripped off. That's, that's a little shitty. I'm just going to be totally honest. But on the other hand, we also know that that's because they're paying extremely high prices so that their distributors or Plexus's Hunbots get a cut of that, you know, sale. The only thing that this really shows, this quote, this statement, whatever, it's just proof that they are overcharging for their products and they are competently aware of that. But don't worry, like I said, there is more to come. Before we get into the legal battles, reviews, and the workplace, let's take a look at those very products. And now let's take a moment to pay some bills and thank today's sponsor, Daily Harvest. This year, I think it's important for everyone to refocus on what it means to take care of yourself. And that gets a little bit easier with Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest delivers delicious food, all built on organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. It takes literally minutes to prepare and I don't have to think twice about the food I'm eating and if it's good for me. And Daily Harvest Harvest has a little bit of everything, smoothies, crisp flatbreads, or even a harvest bowl or soup. And Daily Harvest is ready when you are. Everything stays fresh in your freezer until you're ready to enjoy it, so you waste less food too. And Daily Harvest never use preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything. And they even just launched their first ever plant-based milk collection, starting with almond milk. And that's all it is, almonds and a dash of sea salt. And of course, one of the most important things to me is that Daily Harvest is also committed to minimizing their environmental impact. They're in the process of transitioning to 100% compostable, recyclable, plant-based and renewable fiber packaging. So if you're ready to get started and try Daily Harvest, make sure to go to dailyharvest.com and enter promo code MLM to get $25 off your first box. Again, that's promo code MLM for $25 off your first box. Check it out again at dailyharvest.com, promo code MLM. I wanted to start with the Plexus breast check kit that I'm guessing was around when they were Plexus pink and more focused on those types of products. The thing is, as messy as the supplement industry might be, there's something I find incredibly scummy about saying early detection saves lives on this product unless it's scientifically proven. Cancer is a massive fear for many people. And there's one population-based survey that found that more than half of participants occasionally worry, while about 6% have carcinophobia. So unless this breast check product spelled breast check, C-H-E-K without a C-K for some reason, uh, unless it actually works and has a scientific backing, then it really pisses me off to see it in Plexus's personal care section. Their only testimonial when you scroll down is some anonymous quote that reads, great innovative product that works, everyone should have one and use it for their monthly exams. For all I know, the CEO could have written this. It's anonymous and there's no data behind it. There's no studies. There's, there's nothing that tells me this product is trustworthy at all. 
Hell, I don't even know what it is. It's just a device that adheres to your skin and creates a magnification of sensory touch, which that just doesn't seem very functional or real. Unfortunately, there's no more details on the Plexus site than this. So I had to go to a completely different source, Truth and Advertising, to learn more about Plexus's own products. Not a great look for a company in my opinion, but here's what they had to say. Plexus Worldwide, an Arizona-based MLM, is heavily marketing its breast check kit in connection with Breast Cancer Awareness Month with its Check It America campaign. But what really needs checking are those marketing claims. Throughout October, Plexus and the American Cancer Society are promoting awareness and prevention of a disease with Check It America, says a report in the Direct Selling News, a trade publication. The breast check kit, according to Plexus, helps women find lumps more easily when performing self-exams through its sensory touch magnification. The product's label claims it is recommended by doctors and nurses. This month, the company says it will donate 25% of profits from all sales of the kit to the American Cancer Society. But let's stop here and unpack some of the claims made by Plexus regarding this self-exam kit. Plexus may be donating proceeds of the sales to the American Cancer Society and ACS is indeed promoting breast cancer awareness, but is not teaming up or in partnership with Plexus, despite such claims found on social media. Plexus sort of did a good deed, but then kind of canceled it out. I'm not saying they didn't donate their money to ACS, but they did it at their own benefit and only to make themselves look good. The ACS didn't partner with them. If I'm saying that I'm making a donation to the charity, that doesn't mean that they agree with what I do. That doesn't mean that they're sponsoring my product. For example, when I hit 500,000 subscribers on the main YouTube channel, one of the things I did was I did a live stream that was a charity fundraiser. And the charity in question that I was giving the proceeds to was Asan. Now I did privately reach out to Asan and ask them for permission to say, hey, I would like to say that I'm doing a fundraiser and the proceeds are going to you. Is that okay if I say that? It was not me saying, hey, Asan totally backs up what my channel does 100%. All I was asking for was permission to say, hey, I wanna do a fundraiser and I want these proceeds to go to you. Are you cool with accepting donations from my channel and from the fan base? And they said, yes, that's all it is. That's not hard to do, but that's not what Plexus did here. They went ahead and said they were partnered, which is not the case. Now, whether or not ACS actually knows that their breast check product is and agrees or disagrees that it works, the American Cancer Society is a recognizable name. And Plexus can, and apparently did, use that to their benefit and very easily could mislead someone into thinking that their adhesive device, whatever the hell it is, was sponsored by them when it was not. And I think that's really gross. But I'm not the only one who thought it was gross because the ACS thought it was pretty gross too. Evelyn Barella, ACS's Director of Media Relations, said that after being alerted to the issue by Tina.org, it has requested that Plexus discontinue using our name in association with promotion of this product. Barella also said that ACS does not recommend breast self-examination as an early detection method for breast cancer because devices do not show that regular breast self-exams help reduce deaths from breast cancer, nor does ACS endorse any product or service. While Plexus also claims that the patented kit is recommended by doctors and nurses, it provides no specifics on its website about who exactly is doing the recommending. Several distributors point to the fact that the product was featured on the syndicated daytime television show, The Doctors, as a selling point. That's so, the Plexus Pink Breast Check, is that right? That's exactly okay. right, the Plexus Pink Breast Check. Being featured on The Doctors is not an achievement. I could do a whole separate video about that show, but if you've seen my videos about Dr. Oz and Dr. Phil, it's pretty safe to say you can say, uh, these doctors are not reliable and I don't trust them and neither should you. Which maybe I should do something on The Doctors. Hmm, I'll think about it. Anyway, I will say that I don't personally see the whole recommended by doctors and nurses statement anywhere on their product page. So my guess is that they had to take that down when they were called out for it. Some distributors even go so far as to claim that the kit was FDA approved when the company page clearly says these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. So that's a bit infuriating as well. Without a doubt in my mind, this MLM is clearly preying upon people's fears of cancer. Even if the ACS has come out and said, hey, your product isn't all that helpful, can you please stop using our name? Then you made a massive fuck up. Like, come on. And this is only the first product I happen to stumble across from this company. So this doesn't really bode well for Plexus, does it? Now, continuing on through their other products, I'm not gonna be able to cover every single product that they have or we would literally be here all day. 
Also, I think that any of you who've been here for some time know now that a chocolate supplement shake costs a certain amount of money and MLMs charge more than that for less product and blah, 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 blah. We've been through this pattern multiple times before. Nothing's really changing here. Seriously, the amount of brands and price comparisons I've done for those is a bit ridiculous, but we're gonna take a look at one nutrition product and one personal product. So for the nutrition product, we're going to take a look at this generic looking Mega X bottle. And really the only reason why I chose it is because it got a big old X on it. So I, I just want to know it's like pirate treasure. I need to seek it out. Anyway, for one bottle that's supposed to last about a month, 60 capsules, but they suggest you take two a day. That's $45, 38 without a subscription. And that's quite a bit of money after all for just one bottle. And they've got plenty of supplements to offer. So I don't even want to imagine how much money someone is actually spending if they're purchasing like a whole range of these products. On one description, they even say it's good for the soul and the omega-3 fatty acids are super healthy and support everything from your heart to your brain. Not that those statements have been evaluated by the FDA. It's just, you know, something there in a teeny little font and some light gray text. The Omega blend is fine, I suppose. It's definitely cheaper elsewhere. And you know, I'm pretty sure you could have guessed that. Generally speaking, if you're eating healthy, exercising, and your body is taking in nutrients, then supplements aren't as needed as you may have been led to believe. I don't wanna stay on the subject for too long. People do have varied ranges of what they believe, what they take, what they don't take, etc. So let's just go on and keep it moving and get right to their body cream before we get into the company itself. Now their body cream is $50 without a subscription. And it just, you know, there has to be gold dust or something in this, like for real. Unfortunately, uh, I am quite disappointed. There's no gold dust in this. If you click on the label, you'll pretty much find that it's made of water, alcohols, aloe juice, some primrose and lavender oil, but nothing super impressive and nothing that justifies that price tag. And again, unsurprisingly, there's far cheaper products on the market, even ones that are considered more natural, even though that word doesn't exactly hold much water to begin with either. The point is simply that whether you want natural products or not, there's better award-winning skincare for less. So, you know, maybe don't buy Plexus and support a horrible business model with overpriced products. Now for the next point, does it actually work? Because hey, if Plexus is some miracle weight loss product, then it would be worth the price point, right? Abby Langer, a registered dietitian, reviewed Plexus back in 2016. She makes some absolutely fantastic points on her website, like the fact that they've never done any clinical trials. So their evidence is about as good as saying, trust me, bro. Abby also continues to break down the weight loss ingredients themselves. And I've got to say, I love her snarky, sassy tone. Here's what she says. The contents of Plexus Block are simple, white kidney bean extract and seaweed. Looking at the research on white kidney bean extract, I was surprised to see that there is research showing that it does indeed block starches. Wow, Plexus, you got me. Basically, the kidney beans contain an ingredient that interferes with the body's ability to break down starches into small absorbable particles, so they're not absorbed. It won't work on sugars because those are in smaller particles and therefore are easily absorbed, bean extract or not. Fair enough, there is some research that white bean extract can help with weight loss, at least in the short term, but the potency and consistency of white bean for weight loss is unreliable. In other words, it may or may not work for you. And the studies on white bean extract that exist are small and generally poorly done. Let's move on to Plexus Slim, about which the company says, simply pour into a bottle of water 30 minutes before a meal, drink and experience the results you've been dreaming of. That sounds amazing. What could this product possibly contain? Answer, chromium, Garcinia cambogia, and green coffee bean extract. I hate to sound boring and well, like a dietitian, but the studies on Garcinia and green coffee bean, and I mean the studies done on humans, not on rats, because even though there have been lots of animal studies done on these and other supplements, we aren't rats, have been small, poorly done, and mostly show no significant results. Chlorogenic acid, which is the active ingredient in green coffee beans, has been studied a bit for its role in weight loss. These studies, however, were industry funded and small. I don't think I need to go too much further because I think you get the point of what she's trying to say here. It's repetitive. It's almost the same as any other weight loss MLM we've looked at. Based on minimal anecdotal evidence, it's preying upon people who are desperate to lose weight. We have seen it before and we will probably see it countless times more again, I'm sure. Some of the reviews online have been glowing, but many in-depth analysis of the products point to there being no research about Plexus and minimal research about their ingredients. Again, 
If this works for you somehow, then that's super cool. The placebo effect is an amazing thing for some people. Some sources like Healthline say that no serious side effects from Plexus have been reported. Whereas others have said the Cambogia in it is linked to drastically lowering blood sugar over time. On the BBB, there's over 60 complaints that have been filed with most of them being about issues with shipping, refunds, and things of that nature. Hell, the FTC has over 800 complaints about Plexus. Like it took some time for these sources to load. It's almost 200 pages long. That's insane. Now, some of this is from ambassadors, but many people here are those that tried the product and had negative side effects, or it just simply didn't work for them. One person states that they tried the product for over a month and they were gaining weight or it was making them jittery. They tried to get a refund within the 60 day guarantee, but were unable to. Another says they had a bad reaction to the product and quote, my heart started racing. I was lightheaded, struggling to breathe, shaking. And the only thing that made it go away was to throw up the product. I thought maybe I did something wrong and tried again and again, the same reaction. Some said they weren't made aware that they'd been billed monthly. Others said they couldn't stand the taste. And one in particular says that it was marketed towards them as a miracle cure. This review states that distributors say their products can help people from neuropathies caused by Lyme disease, diabetes, fibromyalgia, chronic pain, and that people will be able to get off their doctor prescribed medications, etc. A particular ambassador in Minnesota is plastering Facebook with testimonials of people recovering from all sorts of maladies. I was under the impression that it is against FDA and FTC regulations to be making such claims. Don't worry, anonymous reviewer, we will be getting into that later. And you know, yes, the answer to your question or your statement, yes, it is illegal. But anyway, we need to answer the question, does it work? And well, there's hundreds of complaints that say it doesn't. So if it does work, then there's no guarantee of if it will work for you specifically. As for one slightly more in-depth interview, one blog, That Organic Mom, tried their most known weight loss product, the pink drink, and here's what she said. I'm disappointed to report that other than frequent headaches, the pink drink made no noticeable or documentable improvement on my weight or health. I rarely ever got headaches until Plexus. I'm one of those people that just doesn't get headaches. The first week of the drink, I got headaches every single day. If I followed my own instincts, I would have tried to return the product right away, but I kept doing what the ambassadors encourage you to do, keep taking the products and wait for the magic. Any complaint of headaches are said to be from a die-off reaction and users are encouraged to continue giving it a chance. Against my intuition, or maybe I should say out of sheer desperation, I continued to take the supplement, even though I had and still have misgivings about the company and the product. After a week passed, I didn't have any headache every single day, but they were still occurring randomly, which was a definite side effect as I am not the kind of person who really gets headaches. Coincidentally, I had just visited my doctor for blood work on 7-12-16 and I began taking Plexus on 8-6-16. I had a follow-up with my doctor on 8-30-16, so I was able to use actual documented test results to measure any changes. There were none. This is just one woman's opinion, but I figured it was worth sharing because, hey, if what she says is true and this actually happened to her, she does have her blood work as evidence. As for this portion of the episode, in summary, I can't make a definitive call on this because again, Plexus doesn't have any clinical research behind them. As for what I can definitively state about the company, well, that's an entirely separate matter because of what we're going to start discussing now. Plexus has been the center of some incredibly shady situations, shall we call them. The first of which being naturally a lawsuit. Now this lawsuit is about the sexual harassment in the workplace, or at least that does come into play here. So if you are sensitive to that, I more than understand if you want to click ahead to a different section or whatever. But for those of you sticking around, remember how I said that instances of sexual harassment were hard to find? The thing is, if you Google it, this lawsuit doesn't show up, but it was on Truth and Advertising's website. According to the suit, the plaintiff is none other than Alfred Pedersen, and he's complaining that Tarl Robinson, the CEO, defamed him when in actuality, Tarl was the one misbehaving at Plexus Worldwide. So this is a bit interesting seeing an executive turning against another executive. Alfred says that in 2014, he and Brittany Gaines, an executive assistant, were discussing the upcoming NFL playoffs. Brittany jokes that the 49ers were going to defeat the Seattle Seahawks and in good fun, Alfred tapped her butt laughing, get out of here. The following morning, Taro called Alfred into his office and said that Brittany had filed an HR complaint against him. Thankfully, Alfred apologized to her, but another complaint was filed against him at a later date saying the word dick all at a work presentation. 
Brittany also later accused Alfred of hugging her, kissing her on the back, and inviting her up to his room when they were at a convention. She told Tarl that she didn't want to see Alfred for the rest of the convention because of this, understandably so, but Tarl didn't relay this to Alfred. When he greeted her during the convention one morning, she filed a complaint and quit her job. Alfred said he didn't remember that encounter with her and that he couldn't have done that because he had an injured shoulder. Rules were set in place for Alfred after this, blocking him from coming into the Plexus office, receiving daily sales reports, company emails, attending executive meetings, receiving quarterly financial reports, you get the idea. He was fired without being fired, essentially, because he sexually harassed Britney, drank to excess at the convention, and engaged in disruptive conduct. Honestly, I think the right thing was done here. I rarely give an MLM credit for handling their higher-ups properly, but in this case, I think this was dealt with about as well as they could have. Alfred being one of the top two members may not have been easy to fire, even though let's be real, he should have been fired. But I suppose barring him from dealing with people or sexually harassing anyone else is an, it's a start, I guess. I don't know what else to say. It's just clear that, you know, no one ruined his reputation but himself, if anything. And this, you know, this kind of speaks to the company's shortcomings. Just kind of saying this is how they deal with a potential sexual harassment thing. They're just kind of like, mm, just don't show up. But you can still get money. We were determined to do network marketing as it could be done and should be done. Now, as for the other lawsuits, well, those are a different story. One comes from the Environmental Research Center, a nonprofit in California. The suit reads, the complaint is based on allegations contained in a notice of violation dated April 10th, 2015, served on the California Attorney General, other public enforcers, and Plexus. The notice of violation constitutes adequate notice to Plexus because it provided adequate information to allow Plexus to assess the nature of the alleged violation consistent with Proposition 65 and its implementing regulations. The Safe Drinking Water and Toxic Enforcement Act of 1986 is an initiative statute passed as Proposition 65. For many years, Plexus has knowingly and intentionally exposed numerous persons to lead without providing a Prop 65 warning. Both prior and subsequent to ERC's notice of violation, Plexus failed to provide a warning label of the covered products. Plexus has at all times relevant here too been aware that the covered products contained lead and that the persons using these products have been exposed to the chemical. Through its website, Plexus has made various representations regarding the quality, purity, and beneficial nature of the company's products, as well as the steps purportedly taken to ensure those qualities, such as. Plexus Worldwide is committed to providing out ambassadors with life-changing products. Our core beliefs are simple. Be trustworthy, be honest, be reliable, be responsible. These beliefs encompass all that we do. You can have the confidence in the quality of our products. Gotta love that hypocrisy. It just doesn't even state that Plexus is beyond the legal limit of lead. They just won't admit that their products have any lead in them. Lead is serious. It can cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm. It's almost ironic in a really messed up way. No, actually it, it is ironic. That's the right word. That Plexus is profiting off breast cancer checks while their own products have lead in them. The ERC didn't say, hey, stop making your products. They just said, please warn people and label them properly. But Plexus can't even be bothered to do that much. It's just next level scummy. Not that this is the only issue they've had with dangerous ingredients in their products, of course. Back in 2014, this alert came out, which states, the Australia Therapeutic Goods Administration warned consumers not to use these products as they were found to contain 1,3-dimethylamine, a drug that is not approved for sale in Canada. Health Canada received one Canadian report of a serious adverse reaction suspected to be associated with a Plexus Slim Accelerator product. Due to limited information at this time, Health Canada is unable to determine whether the product reported is the same as the product that is the subject of the TGA alert, or what role, if any, the product may have played in the adverse reaction. It is not known where the product was purchased. Health Canada is currently following up on this report. Side effects associated with DMAA include high blood pressure, shortness of breath, chest pain, stroke, and psychiatric disorders. Canada advises Canadians to contact the Health Products and Food Branch Inspectorate. So yes, maybe you lose weight. Not that they have any studies to prove that, but breathing might be a little more difficult now. And personally, I don't think that's a great trade-off. If a country is banning your weight loss products, there might just be something wrong with them because yes, this warning did in fact turn into a ban. 
As for Plexus's response to all of this, in a statement to Tina.org, Plexus said that its testing shows its products are below the Prop 65 threshold, but out of an abundance of caution, it displays warnings on the ones subject to the laws that are shipped to California. The company also said it stopped selling the Accelerator product that contained DMAA and launched a reformulated product in 2013. On the one hand, as pleased as I am that they don't sell these dangerous products anymore, I think it's pathetic that they were sold in the first place. If you can't afford to do proper testing and be backed by legitimate science, then perhaps don't start a weight loss brand. Just saying. Speaking of dangers to your health though, let's talk about all the false health claims Plexus distributors use to even sell a product. I know that we've seen this a lot from the pandemic, Hunbot saying that their products can protect you against COVID, but Plexus was doing this before MLM thought it was cool to lie about their products. Or, well, you know, they were desperate enough to make things up for money, profiting off a pandemic was just a cherry on top. However, we'll start by talking about Plexus's website because this just doesn't come from distributors. It starts all the way at the top. A warning letter was sent to Tarl on July 30th, 2014, and here's what it said. Dear Mr. Robinson, this is to advise you that the US Food and Drug Administration reviewed your website at the internet access www.plexusworldwide.com in April and July, 2014, and has determined that you take orders there for the products Fast Relief, Pro Bio 5, and Bio Cleanse, which the website promotes for conditions that cause these products to be drugs under section 201 G1B of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The therapeutic claims on your website establish that your products are drugs because they are intended for use in cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of disease. Examples of some of the website claims that provide evidence that your products are intended for use as drugs include fast relief. Nerve damage is present to some degree in most cases of chronic pain, especially neck and back pain. Nerve damage can occur due to trauma, medication side effects, or other metabolic issues. Features and benefits may reduce the associated symptoms from nerve damage or pain, numbness, tingling, pins and needles sensation, and weakness. ProBio 5. ProBio 5 will typically provide the following results. Jock itch, migraine headaches, recurring cystic vaginal infections. BioCleanse. Why do you need Plexus BioCleanse? Many people are in a low oxygen slash toxic state. Viruses, bacteria, fungi, and other pathogenic microbes thrive in this condition. Plexus BioCleanse can increase the oxygen levels around these microbes, causing them to die due to their high oxygenated environment. The FDA demanded that Plexus take appropriate steps and respond within 15 days, which it seems they have, judging by my cursory look at the website earlier. I can't say I'm surprised by any of this in the slightest, but it irritates me more to see this behavior come from Plexus as opposed to the distributors. You can't always blame a company for the actions of its employees, but in this case, what else were distributors expected to say? They were simply following Plexus's example. Science-based medicine and Quackwatch have been quick to point out that expectedly many distributors did lie during the pandemic about Plexus's effectiveness. Even before I look at this article, I made a note about immune boosting. I swear, if I hear one more hunt say their products will help protect you against COVID, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just lose it, I swear to God. Sure enough though, Plexus manages to somehow still disappoint me. Not only do they say their products give an immune boost, but they target worried parents and say their kid formula will protect children. According to my source, truthandadvertising.org has lambasted Arizona-based multi-level marketer Plexus Worldwide LLC for selling a kids essentials combo comprised of two supplement products, Mega Kids Microbiome and X Factor Kids that its distributors claim to help boost children's immune systems, possibly keep them virus-free, a host of health conditions that affect children, including asthma, eczema, ADHD, and GI issues. Truthandadvertising.org found most of these health claims were made after the Federal Trade Commission sent a June 5 warning letter to the company about its unsubstantiated coronavirus prevention or treatment claims for its products. It also found that the company has made claims for income generating opportunities for distributors tied to the pandemic, even through the Plexus 2018 income disclosure statement reveals that average annual earnings for distributors was a little more than $300. That amount doesn't take into account fees and expenditures incurred by distributors. Tina.org of course being truth in advertising, that's just the acronym they use. Like, please, please, please don't believe anyone, any person, any company that says their product can protect you against COVID, boost your immune 
system, any of it, unless they have verifiable scientific evidence. Let me say it again. There are no studies that prove that Plexus actually does what they claim it does. That alone is the biggest red flag. Aside from the fact that their distributors promote it for kids and there's multiple cases of Plexus having dangerous ingredients. Now that we're at the last portion of today's episode, the question remains, can anyone actually make money selling Plexus? According to their own income disclosure, the answer is a resounding no, or at least more than 97% of the time, no. Over 80% of ambassadors make $300 yearly. When you take into account what they pay to subscribe to Plexus, they're probably just losing money. Another 14% on top of that will make less than $3,700 annually. All in all, just over half a percentage will earn a full-time income. As Finance Guy stated, the only reason you should join Plexus is if you're already spending over $100 a month on their products and want to recommend them to others. Even if this is the case, you might want to look at what other brands are charging for similar products. You might find that Plexus is not price competitive. Literally the only understandable reason why someone would join Plexus is to get a slightly better price on their products. And even then, since you're not getting better off using Plexus for weight loss, it's a poor reason. Once again, it is disappointing to find that there's nothing really redeemable about this company. They've donated a total of $100,000 to nonprofit organizations earlier this year. So I suppose that's a single positive that I could find, if only for the fact that the money is better off not in their hands but it's not as if they're using that money for research anyway. With all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's multi-level Monday. If you enjoyed this episode and would obviously like more of them, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, wherever you're hearing this so that you can stay up to date every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for making it to another multi-level Monday and I will see you in the next one. Bye.